Never underestimate a woman with a book. We agree. <laughs> this was a gift to me from friends from, let's see if you can see it. The Strand. Yeah. yeah nice. I love it because I love a bag, but also it has really long straps, which I really like. Nice. So you can really get it onto your shoulder. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Nice. And should we say who we are? <laughs> oh, hello. We're the book cougars, two middle-aged women on the hunt for a good read. I'm Emily. And I'm Chris. And we Hi. like a good bag. We, we were do. so excited. We, yes. we jumped right to the, to, to the main event. To the good part. That's going to be the highlight of the video, folks. <laughs> well, actually, what I do want to say is a reminder. Bookstores need our help now more than ever. And we always think books, you know. But this right. they have great swag and sidelines. And, Absolutely. you know, I have now that I'm commuting from West Hartford to Guilford, I've become the bag lady. Mm -hmm. So I am so appreciative of a nice tote that I can add to my multiple totes that I carry on my arms in and out of all the buildings <laughs> I frequent now. That's awesome. <laughs> That's so cool. And I have to say that sideline items like bags, they usually have a higher margin. So bookstores make a little bit more profit off of them than books. So yeah. Every yeah. little bit helps. Absolutely. Yeah. So we wanted to do a video because for one, it's been a while since we've done a video. Um, for two, we have decided to start shooting with Zoom because we were having some te technical difficulties. So this video might look different. It might not. We'll find out. Find out. Yes. Yeah. But we wanted to give you all a little bit of a glimpse of Patrick Sweeney. I'm, I'm going like this as if he's right there. Um, <laughs> Patrick Sweeney is the political director of every library and the every library institute and we had him as a guest on episode 117 so check out that episode to listen to the full interview but we're going to have a little snippet at the end of this interview yeah. featuring Patrick so you get to see him as well as hear him that's right yeah it was really fun to chat with him yeah and we also have some really exciting author spotlights coming up, and we thought we would just share with you our enthusiasm for those. And also to let you know, part of why we want to talk about it is if you have any questions for these particular authors, um, feel free to email us at bookcougars at gmail.com, you know, do something on all of our various social media platforms. We'd love to hear from you. Put a comment first, down below. Oh, yeah, in yeah. the video. As they all, all, tubers always are like, down below. Yeah, anyway, down below. We're not mocking book no. tubers or YouTubers no. at all. No, we're just slow on the uptake. <laughs> well, you know what? We're just not used to having hand motions be <laughs> seen, right. you know? On a podcast, right. it's just not relevant. No, so we're, we're excited just to be able to do stuff like yeah. leave a comment below. We had to get out of our jammies to do this, y'all. We know, can do we the put, podcast we, in our jammies. So we put makeup on. Well, <laughs> That's lipstick. Right. That's the right. extent of exactly. my makeup anyway. <laughs> yeah, I know. You can't even put lipstick on to go out in the world anymore because you're wearing a mask. Right. So, you know, it's fun to have an excuse. <laughs> so the first author we're going to have on is Jason Pinter. Yes. He has another series, um, but this is the one that I've talked about on the podcast. This is the first book in the series called Hide Away. And then the second one, and this is out now, the second one is called A Stranger at the Door, and this is releasing January 12th. Nice. So, you know, being the type A anal person I am, I'm going to recommend you go this one now. Pre-order this one. Put it on request at your library. We'll be chatting with um, Jason. He'll be on episode 119, okay. if I have that right. All right. Yeah. Um, and then our another future guest we have coming up is this is going to be shiny because it's a library copy but bill goldstein as you can see his name down there um his book is the world broken to virginia wolf t.s Eliot, d.h lawrence ian forster and the year that changed literature i just read that backwards on this you did it's so funky isn't it oh you oh yeah, yeah yeah i this is you know all of our librarians out there this is an emily pet peeve right here <laughs> I wanted to take a picture of the book 
but the stickers are on top yeah. of all the words. It's hard, I know, because this book has words all over the cover. Yeah. So. I mean, libraries just have their standard procedures, yeah. but, you know, there are times when it could be a little bit moved over. This is, I got from our local library, and it's on the back. Mm -hmm. so yeah. um, different libraries have them in different places and you know it's just like when I was a bookseller and you had like the sale stickers or whatever and it had to go in the upper left hand corner and it would cover things it, it's a pain in the ass yeah but and then, consistency is you know what corporate and bosses look for yes that's right and then there's people like me that are always trying to get the goo off from those stickers you know and get crazy but yeah. anyway yeah. So we're super excited to talk to Bill Goldstein and Jason Pinter. Um, Bill Goldstein also, not only has he written this book, but he's done a lot of um, book events that we've attended and he's been the moderator and yeah. we have great admiration for his skills at interviewing authors. Right. You know, in this day and age, it's kind of interesting. Like you get favorite people who do things that you never thought you'd have a favorite of mm -hmm. like a favorite book event moderator but Bill right. was our yeah. favorite so there we have yes. it like changes in the 21st century during the time of pandemic and zoom yeah and then you can follow them on social media and feel like you're stalking them but that it's allowed so yes. yeah <laughs> that's what i do it's <laughs> awesome yeah we're looking forward to talking with both of these authors and bill also he has a career as a journalist um mm. and so we're going to have fun talking with him about kind of the career change he did in some ways. He went for a PhD a little bit later while he was in the midst of a journalism career, which is kind of different. Yeah. Is that yeah. TMI? No, because okay. we're going to ask him about it. Okay. So <laughs> <laughs> he also um, has a television spot should we say on the news mm -hmm. on Sunday mornings he does a, a segment called Bill's Books where he talks very briefly about two books and it's great yeah he's quite a wordsmith because he doesn't get much time <laughs> but he really gives you good insight into the two books he's talking about yeah yeah so I don't know Emily what else do you want to talk about Anything I think that's else? it we that's want to know what you're reading. So if any of you are in touch with us on social media or want to email us at bookcougars at gmail.com, we want to hear from you. We yeah. really do. What are and you if reading? you have any, yeah, what are you reading? Um, what are you, what cookbooks are you cooking from? I'd like to know that. I did just talk about on the episode that's releasing on Tuesday, this hunkster of a cookbook. Well, it's actually it's like a coffee table cookbook. That's the best way I can say it. Yeah. Favicon, 415 days beginning to end. It has some recipes, but it's mostly the story of this restaurant and why they chose to close at the height of its success. So, yeah. Actually, yeah, book. the episode we just recorded was episode 118. And it will and air then... on Tuesday, December 8th. Yeah. So, Come listen mm -hmm. then, and if you want to share what you're reading or you have a great recommendation, leave it in the comments below. Down there. Down below. Um, or, like Emily said, email us. And we're just going to stop now and say happy reading. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening to the podcast, and enjoy this little tidbit with Patrick. If you haven't gotten – if you like what you hear and you haven't listened to episode 117 – that is out already. That is where the full interview with Patrick resides. Thanks, everybody. Wear your mask. Yeah, wear those we should masks, have had masks, people. Oh, over the nose. All oh, right. <laughs> wear a mask and wear it properly. Over wear it the properly. Nose. Yeah. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Stay safe, everybody. Hi, everyone. We are so happy to welcome Patrick Sweeney. Patrick sits on the board of directors for Every Library Institute. He's also the co-author of Winning Elections and Influencing Politicians for Library Funds, as well as Before the Ballot, Building Support for Library Funding. Every Library is a nonprofit organization with a mission to support libraries and librarians, both in the United States and abroad. The COVID-19 pandemic has had a great effect on libraries across the globe. Many people are relying on their services more than ever. 
At the same time, librarians are working diligently to figure out how to create new systems so that accessing library resources can be done safely during the pandemic. Library funding is imperative to help keep the doors open. In each election cycle, tens of millions of dollars are at stake for library funding, and individuals like us are asked to support initiatives to fund their local library when entering the voting booth. The Every Library Institute is dedicated to building voter support and advocating in favor of public funding for libraries. Patrick, listeners of the Book Cougars podcast know how much we adore and use multiple library systems. Thank you for being here, and we were hoping you could just start with letting us know about the work of the Every. I always I keep wanting to call it the Everyday Library <laughs> Institute because I think of going to the library every day, but it's Every Library. You know that's really funny because in I'd say half the interviews that I do, they they introduce us to the Everyday Library. <laughs> that's so <laughs> that's funny. Really funny. I just we didn't all- want to. We all want to be there every day. That's (laughs) why. Yeah. Um, So we're we're actually two organizations. We're Every Library, which is a 501c4 organization, um, which is a little bit different than your standard 501c3 nonprofit in that we can expend um, the bulk of our resources on political activity supporting a social cause. In our case, that social cause is libraries. Um, And then we have the Every Library Institute, which is our 501c3, which is kind of a supporter companion organization to the C4. Um, and the Institute does a lot of training for librarians, a lot of public education. Um, but the big thing that it's built to do is a lot of the research that's needed to understand um, uh, how and why people use libraries, how and why people support libraries, understanding voter support, um, and building those those kinds of data sets so we can um, better speak to our communities and, and whatever library is serving those communities. Well, that's great. So you work, do you work with, so it's all public libraries you work with for the most part? You know, the bulk of our work is public libraries. Um, and second to that, um, only because um, uh, we don't hear about it as often as, as school libraries. Mm. Um, you know, we do have a, a large, generous um, grant from Follett to work on a lot of school library issues. And I don't think a lot of people realize that we've lost something like 60% of school libraries across the country, uh, which is hugely devastating because, of course, where those libraries are lost are communities that need them the most. You know, it's not the wealthy communities that are losing their school libraries. It's not the communities where kids don't have access to books at home that are losing. You know, it's, it's, it's those ones where kids really need to have access to the books um, because that's their only source of it. You know, um, school uh, public libraries in those areas are also generally not as well funded, so they don't have as many open hours, homework help, and all those other kinds of things that libraries offer. So um, we're really proud of that school library work. Um, but our public library work is um, largely working around ballot initiatives, campaigns, and elections, which is where about 90% of library funding comes from, is from the will of the local voters and the will of the local politicians. And so um, we're the only organization in the country that's entirely dedicated to um, uh, working on ballot initiatives, local campaigns, local elections, and the local politics that um, ultimately fund the majority of our libraries. 